Welcome to the future of real estate. Your chance to find out what's going on in real estate and the real estate market. This morning's show is brought to you by the Ellis team at REMAX Realty Group. REMAX is award winner for most transactions in Florida. With the Ellis team at REMAX, it's a family affair. Always call the Ellis team, they'll handle you with care. Welcome to the Future of Real Estate. I'm Brett Ellis of the Ellis Team at REMAX Realty Group. You can reach us at 239-489-4042. Don't forget our website, which is topagent.com. If you haven't joined us before, you're in for a real treat. On this show, we talk about real estate issues affecting you. We offer tips and insight you won't get anywhere else. Today, we have a special guest uh, to the show, and it is Sean Ellis. Sean is a senior associate in the Fort Myers office of Retzel & Andrus. Uh, Retzel and Andrus is a national law firm with 11 offices in Florida, Ohio, and Washington, D.C. Sean focuses his practice in the area of condominium and community association law, representing associations and their boards in a broad area of legal issues, including day-to-day -day board operations and governance, statutory compliance, and covenant enforcement. He is also experienced in the conversion of marina condominiums. Sean was the first attorney in the Fort Myers area to receive the LEED AP designation from the U.S. Green Building Council. Sean, welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Okay. Um, it's, it's, I'll tell you what. This coming weekend, my association is having their annual meeting. They're, we're going to be going over budgets. We're going to be electing new officers. <laughs> I've seen in the news lately, on TV, in the newspaper, a lot of stuff going on, and I think the biggest issue out there affecting boards is collecting money and budgeting for bad debt. Are you seeing that kind of thing in your practice? It is by far the number one question that we're getting from our association clients these days and prospective clients as well. Well, good. It's, I'd like uh, to think we're on the pulse of things then. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's a serious issue facing associations, and as we're in annual meeting season, uh, you know, associations are putting together their annual budget for the new year, and they're looking back at all the bad debt they had last year, and it's important that their budget for bad debt for this year. Um, what we're trying to do to help people, uh, to help associations, rather, is to not only help them come up with creative ways to manage their, not only manage their bad debt, but manage their, their uh, accounts and uh, their finances, uh, to help generate more income for the association, but also, more importantly, to aggressively pursue collections issues and try to recoup uh, those old expenses. We throw around the term bad debt. Is there any such thing as good debt these days? <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess there, I guess there's not, but um, you know, that's when, when you're budgeting for it and accountants speak. I mean, that's that's what we're referring to. Well, when associations looking at the, their budgets and they have so many homes or condos in foreclosure that they're getting behind more and more every. A month, uh, when that foreclosure is sold, whether it's a condo association or homeowners, uh, how far back can the uh, association collect these uh, fees that's due? Well, what you're referring to is the uh, the statutory cap. It's a uh, it's a safe harbor provision for first mortgagees. And when a first mortgagee does take title to a house via foreclosure or deed in lieu, and a condominium, they're uh, the, so what the association can recoup in back dues from that first mortgagee is capped at six months or 1%. Tell what, I w w that's in relation to mortgage foreclosures, isn't it? Correct. Well, you know what? I'd, let's get into that in the second segment of the show because I, I want to save some time for that. Going back to homeowners, um, what can an attorney do, what can a board do to – get people who are actually living there, they want to stay there, what can you do for collections that way? Are, is, is there things you're doing? Well, absolutely. I mean, the big tool for associations in the state of Florida is their lien rights. And so that's the main thing that you look at as an association board is starting the lien process and leading someone's uh, condominium unit or single family home. Um, whether or not an association feels that they're going to ultimately foreclose their lien 
and take back title to the property in the name of the association. That's not always in the association's best interest. But leading the property is the, uh, is the real hammer that an association has. And at the very least, if that property is one day sold, at least you haven't now have a lien on the property, and it all but guarantees that the association's going to get paid in order for the lien to be released and for someone to actually rebuy the property. So at least it does that for you. You know, as certified distress, the distressed property experts as we are, one of the things we tell people is even if you can't afford to pay your mortgage, try to pay your HOA fee because they could come foreclose on you now, whereas the bank might take six months to a year before they – you just don't know how long they're going to take, but the HOA could do it now. Well, banks are taking even longer than that. I mean, where a foreclosure used to take six, nine months, now bank foreclosures are taking – 18 months and even when it gets all the way to the foreclosure sale banks will oftentimes cancel the sale just to further delay matters and make it impossible because they don't want it on their books yeah more maybe or in less. that quarter or yeah they may not want it they don't want it on their books they don't want to uh, start taking on the expenses of paying but association it, dues etc but right. the association uh, with their help of their legal counsel can lean the property follow the necessary steps in terms of notices timing etc put a lien on the property and then eventually foreclose that lien pretty quickly because they don't want to the, the clock starts ticking and Mike's going to have a good question for you in the next segment once that clock starts ticking they only want so much time to go by they these associations need to get paid because they've got all these bills out there right and it's a big problem for well, that's associations that's why it's a real issue that's why delinquencies are really a, are really a hot topic for associations right now we're actually in jeopardy there's some condo associations and some homeowner associations that could be in jeopardy of going belly up themselves because so many people are delinquent Link went not paying them. Remember that story that made national news where they had one person in a condominium tower and he was the only one? Now, if the developer quit paying and he's the only one paying, obviously that association, it, it's important to get that money coming in. Absolutely. And those are unfortunate uh, scenarios, and they are occurring. Um, you know, in the developer-controlled arena, it's a little bit more complicated. But uh, you know what we're talking about today is when you have, when you have an owner-controlled association that may have been in great fiscal shape just three or four years ago and is now struggling because of more and more delinquencies, whether it be investors or just simply people who can't pay their mortgage anymore and can't pay their assessments. You know, these are becoming uh, real issues. Tell you what, now might be a good time. we got a couple minutes left. Is there anything else in regards to um, compliance issues that a, a new board might want to be aware of that you – is there just one or two things that you kind of – See, well, rather talk about compliance issues, keeping on the, uh, the bad debt topic, there's other things that I'm seeing boards do or at least consider uh, as ways to generate more money or at least to more aggressively pursue collections, not just going through liens, but just as one limited example. Uh, we're seeing boards look into going after a owner's tenant in order to recoup some of the unpaid assessments. For example, lots of owners... Collecting the rent then. Yeah, collect, trying to get the rent directly from the That's tenant. That's a great idea. To their homeowner's assessments. Because why uh, should the tenant pay the landlord and the landlord not pay the bank or the association? And that may or may not be possible in your, in your community. Uh, if it is, it will require taking a look at your documents. It may even require amending your documents. You certainly want to speak to your attorney about it. But it's uh, that's just one of several other alternative avenues that associations are trying to look at as ways to you know because the lien process is what it is trying to get creative and come up with other ways to get money. And you could counsel association boards and all, on all these creative techniques. And you, we do it all the time. You and your day. associates and all your other offices, you probably talk quite a bit, and you come up with a lot of good ideas, don't you? Well, there's a lot of ideas floating around out there, and a lot of them are unique to individual communities, so it's, uh, it's just good to start thinking outside the box that way. Well, fantastic. I want to have you back in another segment because I want to get to Mike's question, which is about how you collect after the foreclosure and how, how long that goes back and all the statutory requirements. Great. You're watching the future real estate presented by the Ellis Tainment Remax. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.